welcome to Face the Facts. It's good to have everybody here once again. It's a lot to talk about here today on our episode of Face the Facts. I haven't been with you in a little bit. Lots of Red Sox things, lots of Major League Baseball. Got to get ready for the Patriots because they'll be here pretty soon with preseason and getting all that together. We have some big Bruins announcements that we've got to uh, talk about here today. And the finals are starting to wrap up here for the NBA and getting some preliminary things ready with the Celtics. I know we talked about them a lot the last time we were here. I'm not going to spend as much time to Phil's displeasure uh, talking much about the Celtics and everything on this show, but I'm going to kick it off, start it off where it belongs, of kind of throw it off to the Red Sox because they deserve to be front and center right now. We're at that halfway point, guys. Halfway point. All-star break is just here. Did any of you get a chance to watch the Home Run Derby and the All-Star game? I did not, unfortunately. I actually I watched. Sorry, oh, you did? Oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I watched a little bit of the All Star game. I didn't watch too much. Of, I didn't watch the Home Run Derby. So it was big with the promotion of Shohei Otani. Because everybody up to speed on who he is, what the. It's pretty much the face of baseball right now, I would say. Well, oh, really? according to everybody except Stephen A. Smith. Of course. <laughs> really? Is he? Would you? I guess I've seen him a lot in promotions, um, but that's kind of. I what... take one thing he says, and I don't listen to him. I don't listen to those hats like him. He's kind of a. He can. He's a joy to to watch because it's a, it's a rare scenario. It's extremely rare where you see a player in this day and age be able to pitch and hit, effectively on both ends of, of the ball game. So he took part in the home run derby. He was an early exit. It was more about the hype though and the build up and everything that was going on with him. And it was it was really fun to be able to see firsthand how much attention that he has brought to the game. First time really since Babe Ruth, when he was doing double duty with pitching, hitting, playing the field, and all that, where we have Otani, who has just taken off and done a great job with everything he's done for the game. I like him. I think he's getting touted a bit too much, but I like him. I think it's fun for baseball. I think it's different for baseball to see somebody who, in my eyes, he's not a great pitcher. He's not a great hitter, but when you put all those things together, it makes him great and it makes him outstanding and everything. So he's in the home run derby. He DH to start the all-star game for the American league. It was pretty cool to see. Your winner of the Home Run Derby is a uh, recurring champion, Pete Alonzo, who, to my surprise, makes more money winning a Home Run Derby than he does with his salary from the New York Mets. I didn't know that either, actually. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. I also I'm heard he went on a slump the Home Run Derby the last contract where he gets more from that. Heck, Bobby Bonilla gets more a year than Pete Alonzo for the Mets. Oh, wow. So it's crazy. Um, I was rooting for Trey Mancini who represents the Baltimore Orioles in the, in the Home Run Derby. As you guys probably know with Mancini, he had a, was it stage three colon cancer or something like that. And he was out for 2020 for the game for, the, for baseball. All systems go for him now. Everything's looking good on his front. He's been having a pretty productive year for the Orioles, one of their best players on the team. And he got to the finals, but Alonzo just, he was a freak. I mean, I love the new rounds. We talked about this, I, not last year, but two years ago when we were doing our show. I love how the formats changed, where you get two minutes, three minutes, whatever's on the clock to hit as many home runs as you can, whoever has the most advances to the next round. What was cool in this home run derby is Otani and uh, Soto, Juan Soto for the Nationals were in this round one they kept hitting the same amount of home runs in, in their in their total and everything. So they went to three kind of tiebreakers to finally try and win it. And Juan Soto was the one that ended up uh, getting the victory and advancing to the next round. But I like this a whole lot more. It's much more fast paced. It's fun. You don't have to sit around and watch these guys take a million pitches to maybe hit a home run with 10 outs. So that was, it's. I think it's a fun format that's pretty neat for the home run derby. Any, any yeah, I mean, down. it's, yeah, it's just, it's so much more fast paced. You got guys swinging at pitches that, you know, they normally wouldn't be swinging at sometimes. Um, Alonjo is just an absolute beast. Um, 
But, yeah, like Phil said last year, I mean, he went into a slump and wasn't doing as well after the home run derby. Um, We'll see how he does this season. But And the Mets um, are in the hunt. The Mets are in the hunt right now. And the NL East is kind of still wide open. With the Braves, Ronald Alcuna Jr. got severely hurt, so he's out for the rest of this year and probably a good majority of 2022. So the Braves are kind of a hit or miss kind of team. The Phillies are about five games back. Pretty much anybody's ball game at that point. I feel like I feel like both East divisions and both leagues are usually pretty tight knit towards the end of the season. That's really all I want to talk about on the all-star game front with everything. We have JD Martinez, Raphael Devers, Xander Bogarts, Nate Evaldi, and Matt Barnes, who had a heart attack eighth inning appearance. Were your representatives for the Red Sox right there? Um, the scary side of things was that Aaron Judge apparently got COVID from the All-Star game. That's why the Red Sox game was canceled last night. He is in the 10-day COVID protocol, which scared me because he was around Bogarts and around Devers and Martinez and other players there. As of now, everything is all systems go for the game this evening, where the Red Sox will be facing off the Yankees for their first game of the second half that will begin tonight. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of hype going on with this team because there was two additions to this roster. But I do want to talk about the draft. We are taking number four. I think a lot of people wanted um, uh, Leiter as their – Jack Leiter as their selection for the fourth pick. He just wasn't there. Leiter went to the Texas Rangers, second pick in the, in the draft. The Red Sox did, though, however, get the number one touted prospect in baseball – he is a shortstop, uh, Marcelo Meyer. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. That is a huge addition to this team. I don't know why he was passed by other teams. I mean, I wanted the pitcher because I think the Red Sox need to develop a pitcher. They really haven't developed anybody since John Lester back in the day uh, for the Red Sox. But this this kid is special, special talent all across the board through Baseball America and other references of who actually is the best overall player in this draft. Red Sox got them. Red Sox got them. So they should be very happy. Now they got to work out the contract and get all that details together. But the future looks bright for the Red Sox right now with this edition and some other ones that they chose in this uh, 2021 draft. So that will make that farm system. Farm system very strong now after Pine Bloom has come in and kind of replenished and redeveloped and scouted and touted all these different new players coming in to be really excited about, which is leading me to the biggest buildup of them all, where the Red Sox have recalled, pretty much brought him up, going to be making his major league, de- major league debut this weekend, Jared Duran, who, if you have not watched or followed along with the Worcester Red Sox, has absolutely been hitting the cover off the ball for them. He's, he's a special player. He's in the same sentence from way back when the Red Sox in 20, uh, 2007 brought up Jacoby Ellsbury. He could be in a Papelbaum conversation, a Lester conversation, a Devers conversation. The kid's the real deal. He's got to prove something, of course. I even put him in the same sentence when Benintendi first came up. So you're going to see him. He's not in the starting lineup tonight because the Red, uh, Red Sox are facing a left-handed pitcher. So Jared Duran will be your center fielder for the majority of games moving forward now. And I think they ideally want him to lead off at some particular point. But slow and steady wins the race. We'll see how he adjusts. He's going to be facing Garrett Cole, most likely in the lineup tomorrow evening when they face the Yankees. Could pinch hit, could play some point in Friday evening game. I'm excited about that. Uh, Tanner Hulk has been uh, recalled by the Red Sox. He was on the roster for opening day, filling in for Eduardo Rodriguez. He's going to slide in in the bullpen in some spot. He's a freak. He's like a right-handed Chris Sale type. So that's going to be huge to put him in there. And then, of course, I just mentioned Chris Sale made his debut for rehab assignment yesterday with the Gulf Coast Red Sox through three innings. Looked absolutely dominant. Pitched great. So another step forward for him. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Sale with the Red Sox in the next two weeks. 
That's how that that's going with them. So I'm excited for this second half of action. Tom, you want to add anything in? I kind of gave everybody the 411 on what's going on. We can talk about it, discuss it. Where do you think this team's going to head as the second half kicks off? Uh, hopefully they can just pick up where they left off. Um, but also another point that you didn't um, bring up is the trade deadlines coming up. And there's a lot of, lot of talk about a lot of big names there in the, uh, in the conversation. Anybody in particular that you'd think about? Um, I got a few, but I'll let you. I mean, I've always been a big Chris Bryant fan. And since he's been like playing all around the field, wouldn't it be a bad idea to have a better uh, utility guy? Did you see what Ortiz did during the All-Star game? No. He was trying to promote, hey, Chris Bryant, you want to come to Boston? I'll make the call. I'll make the call. I so wouldn't mind having kind him. Of been, been, been there. I think the Red Sox have a good connection with the Cubs, with Jed Hoyer. Theo Epstein used to be there, of course. He's now in the – he's big time now with Major League Baseball uh, in their office. But – I wouldn't just put it at Chris Bryant right now with the Cubs, you know. Well, that's are, just one name, but I wouldn't. The Cubs are fall, falling down a cliff here. We want they lost eight of their last ten, so I don't think that they're a playoff team. No, I mean, and I know, I know, Kimbrel's another name that's been in the conversation for a lot of teams. Obviously, we don't want him back here. We don't really, or do we? <laughs> I do. I do. I would take another chance at that heart attack because he's less of a heart attack still to me than Matt Barnes. He is. He is. He is filthy this season. He's got like a, he's got a, I think a 0.53 ERA. Unhittable this year. So whatever adjustment mechanical that he made, kudos to him because he, he grew his hair up. <laughs> so maybe that's what it is. Maybe it can finally just all come together for him now. It's shocking because I thought this guy was done. But let's not discredit how great he is. I mean, the end of his career right now is Hall of Fame, Craig Kimball. He is. Mm -hmm. 100%, oh, yeah. 100%. So if you can figure out what to do with him, I would take that opportunity. The other player that I would do and, and would highly be all for it, you know, you know my disdain. This is my board for today. Disdain for Bobby Dahlbeck. Bobby AAA needs to go right back to Worcester. And I also would figure out what it's going to take to bring an Anthony Rizzo to Boston. He's the first. Or back to Boston. Uh, back to Boston. Correct. Because he was a prospect that was traded for uh, Adrian Gonzalez back in the day. I think that was 2010 or something like that. So I would definitely be interested in that. But there are there are some other moves, might not have to be big time moves, that depth wise makes a lot of sense. I think they definitely need another outfielder of some sorts. I think Verdugo's got some issue going on. I think that's one of the reasons why Duran is up, because I think Verdugo's got some sort of injury with the back or hamstring. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to the DL at some point. I think right now they're gonna manage it as best they can. We'll see. Christian Arroyo is now taking ground balls at first base, which is a nice thing to see because I think the Red Sox know that if they're going to go anywhere and they're going to continue to throw Dahl back in Marwin Gonzalez is out there at first base, you're not winning anything. You're not. They could be great clubhouse guys, guys off the bench, maybe. But when it comes to a championship level team, those two guys I cut bye-bye or send down to AAA because they have just been absolutely abysmal all season long. You're going to see Kiki Hernandez play a lot more at second base now. And that's okay. I mean, I think he's done a great job in center field considering that he really wasn't signed to be a center field. You know, he's done a great job. I think the last two, three weeks for him, we're seeing him healthy and we're starting to see him play better. And I'm not on his case as much as I was early on. But it was, I was, but now he's starting to get his, get, get his gear together. So I'm a believer in this team. I feel good about this team. I don't like how they just lost four out of five to close out the all-star break. I don't like that. But 
I like what I see right now. Now they just need to take it into, you know, kick it into another gear here. Start really separating yourself from the pack. Anything else? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, no. So it went from a four game series. It's now going to be a three game series against the Yankees, all night games. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They'll make up the game from Thursday night in mid August. It'll be a day night doubleheader. I believe it's August 17th. They came out for the date. And uh, that's where we're at right there. Want to add anything, Phil? You know, you a believer, you a believer in the Red Sox? I haven't watched a lot, but what I have been following. And like their the additions, uh, yeah, no, they they're doing pretty well. It's one of those things that's still tough for me to watch baseball sometimes. Yep. Just in gen- um, but yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to this series coming up because I think I'll be able to watch yeah, all night games, seven o'clock. Yeah. You have to probably suffer through a rod on one of those games. Hey, I actually don't. I actually kind of enjoy. Don't, he's don't, not the worst. He's not the worst. He's not a bad. Ana- he doesn't give bad analysis there, and he's always like. Um, but I love Ortiz giving them crap yep. uh, when they're all together. It's great. And, but he takes it with, uh, you know, takes them stride is, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually will say, I know Tom thought I was going to probably flip my lid right there, but I'm not. I cannot stand that Vascursion and Jess Mendoza. Those are the two I can't stand on that Sunday night. Oh, yeah. Jess Mendoza is no longer a part there, but Mr. Santa Maria himself, because that's what he says after a home. He's just he's over the top. Yeah. He try. He he wants to be like he's a he's a Don Orsillo wannabe. Well, few can be. Few can be a Dio. There's only one Don. There's only one King, and that King. Well, and I remember when King he came. King. No, he he was one of the best. And I remember he replaced someone who I thought was irreplaceable. Uh, and Sean, uh, what's his Donna. name? Okay, Don yeah. McDonough. Yeah, because he, he was on the a radio boy. for. Wei now I don't know if you knew that. Oh, does he? No, I, I remember. Yeah, he did a lot of stuff after the sign. He did a lot of national stuff, and he used to do NCAA tournament stuff too. Oh, you want to hear what he's doing next? You're gonna love what, this. Oh, you're looking at what does he got? Know this. It's a good segue into our next. Yeah, yeah. I talk about Sean McDonough is going to be the lead ESPN hockey announcer effective fall. Really? Because NBC lost the rights to the NHL. Oh, wow. So ESPN and I want to say USA or whoever else is going to be covering the game. USA? USA? Yeah, the channel USA, ABC. Oh, weird. ABC, and, um, yeah. Because USA is owned by Universal. So we don't have to deal with, well, this is awesome, to make Pierre Maguire anymore, who's now a Ottawa Senators player operations guy which I'm ecstatic about. You don't have to deal with that squid anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't have to deal with any of the, I liked, I liked Doc Emmerich, but he retired. I, I just couldn't stand some of the NBC announcers. McDonough is a classy, He's no great. homer across the board. I think it'll be a, it's a and good his father, yeah. father was a great, uh, great sports writer. Yeah, Will McDonough. Will. Well, it was a Boston Globe columnist, right? Boston Globe columnist, one of the best uh, football writers of uh, his generation. Yep. yep. Good dude. And it's, like I said, it's a great segue to hockey because I am super ecstatic about the big contract extension for Brandon Carlo. Six years, uh, very low average Ooh. annual value for everything. Very smart move on the Bruins' part. So good work right there for that. We'll go with that first. Discussion, do we like it? Yeah, Does it scare absolutely. you, anything like that? I have a couple doubts of it because of the concussion, but you got your anchor there. Yeah, I agree. The other thing is Kevin Miller, Mr. Injury Prone, is done. He's calling it a career. So that's off the board for the Bruins, so they're going to have to find a spot, another person to slide into that. Um, I think they're working on an extension with Charlie McAvoy. So that's exciting. And they are just waiting for the official Seattle Kraken expansion roster kind of thing to go. But well, that, happens. Hall, that actually Hall happens. is on paper re-signed by the Bruins at a five-year, five-year deal. That's what I've heard. Something like 5.5 mil uh, for those five years. I love it. 
Hall belongs here. Um, yeah, and speaking of the expansion draft, that actually happens Friday night. So we should hear that announcement on the Hall front really soon because Taylor Hall's all in. He, he did not want to leave Boston. He's here, which is also going to mean they have one more, one more year for a deal with Krejci. I believe it's going to be a one-year contract with an option. So Krejci will be back. And now the Bruins are working on a defenseman of some sorts, and they're going to try and fill that void and fill that need. And I think that's big. Um, I also heard on Charlie Coyle's front, he had some surgery on, uh, was it the back that was bugging him or something or groin or some, something along those lines. So he was playing pretty hard the entire year. I think you're going to see a different player next year on the ice. Yep, I do. Um, I think Jake DeBrusque is as good as gone from the Bruins, which I'm ecstatic about. Pack your bags. Bye-bye. Um, uh, very optimistic. I think the Bruins are going to be okay here. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I mean, Kevin Miller retiring opens, opens some things up a little bit should make it interesting for the defensive core next season. Um, hopefully they can find a piece that will be able to fill that void. Uh, healthy piece at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the team doesn't really hasn't really changed much in the last couple of years, so who knows what'll happen? Um, I guess they want, they want one more. They keep saying it: one more with Bergeron, one more with Marshan, Krejci, Rask, all that. So and uh, so Tarasenko from the St. Louis Blues is looking for a trade, but he's only waived his no trade clause for a few teams. And Boston is on that list of teams. Would you do it? Um, depending you on who. He's been injury prone, correct? He has, but I mean, you look at you look at guys that have come over here that have been injury prone and haven't. You know, look at the Hall. Hall played in Buffalo, didn't get injured. Came to Boston, didn't get injured. Um, so, I mean, who knows? There, there's going to be guys that are going to, you know, I think there are more guys here that'll stand up for Tarasenko than there are in St. Louis. Um, but I mean, I, I do it depending on who, who St. Louis would be looking to acquire. Are you a Jack Eichel guy? It's been rumored out there a lot. We don't really, I mean, where were we? What <laughs> we have Bergeron in line one, and I played have... over DeBrusque. Yeah, but he Eichel's not a winger; he's a he's a center. Yeah, I mean, if anything, you'd have to put him at the fourth line, or move Coil down to the fourth line and put Eichel at at the third line. It'd be a great depth move, but at the right price. Yeah, I mean, he's he's another guy that's in in rumors and everything, but I don't think he's gonna. I, I highly doubt he's going to leave Buffalo. Yeah. So we'll see how that all pans out. Like Tom said, the expansion draft and everything is this upcoming weekend. We should have more concrete information next week to provide you with what direction things are going to be headed for. Players that were going to be exposed to waivers, players they're keeping, all that jazz. So we'll keep you posted on that front. Still Sunsville? You still still going sons or how, how we feel uh, well i mean i was kind of on the fence a bit anyways no i mean i don't know uh i, mean, I, I like will the say that block from giannis was oh it's beautiful unbelievable. beautiful the whole play um and uh, San, uh jeff van gundy one of my favorite commentators and coaches of all time i put it beautifully he said uh, i it, it's a he didn't abandon the play uh and he got the pass, the pass beat him. The like, I don't know if you've seen it, Tom, at all, but it was late in the game against. Uh, I, I forget the Sun Center. He's a couple of years in. He's really good, actually. Very athletic too, and pretty smart. Uh, and can finish pretty pretty defiantly uh, under the and over the you know under the hoop. But uh, he was trailing Devin Booker with I think Chris Middleton. Uh, Giannis was, and then the center comes behind him and. Booker threw it up and Giannis had to, you know, cover his, cover his ground, not a lot, but enough 
uh, to kind of turn around and really quickly jump up there and just swat it away and swat it cleanly. Like that's the cleanest block you'll see in that situation. And it was beautiful. And Crab, clean, uh, you know, blocks it, gets it. And then they go down the other way. And they were down nine late in that game where it seemed like they weren't making a bucket. So, yeah, I like, listen, this is a very entertaining for me. Uh, for uh, the casual fan, it might not, actually, for a casual fan, it might be good if they don't know the players, like the games are good. But, um, oh, it's maybe an exception of game three where actually the Bucks kind of blew them out. Yep. So I don't, I think, and this is how the Bucks and Phoenix have been playing teams throughout these whole playoffs where they'll, you know, either lose the first two and then come back the next two or, you know, so who knows? It's uh, the next game is on Saturday night in Phoenix. I imagine Phoenix will come back with something. Chris Paul has had two uh, not too good games in a row. I don't want to say bad. He always makes up for it by not scoring yep. with something else. But uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I can't, I'm not going to upset. I, I chose the Bucks with a friend of mine. I made a, a bet with. We always bet, you know, having dinner, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with the. You know, I might have said Phoenix. I said people were going to choose Phoenix, and I think that's probably the wisest. But you know what? I'm uh, I'm liking how the Bucks have turned it around. But I won't I won't sleep on Phoenix. They're they're here for a reason. It's just I'm looking for the good series here, the so nice I can't give it a fine. Whole thing with the finals, it's something different. I yeah. Think it's not seeing the Spurs or LeBron or any of that nonsense again and again and again and again. So it's something different, and it's 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 it'll be nice to see somebody win a championship who really hasn't, you know, yeah, in a while. So no, and the Suns have never won it, and uh, I guess Milwaukee last time they won, I think it was like 1974 or something with with then Lou Alcindor, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now Kareem Abdul Jabbar. So yeah. so it'll be, um, it'll be nice to have that certain different kind of yeah. Team winning the championship it makes the nba look more the nba is not like a dominance of, of no it's a particular winner and NBA listen no it, well yeah i mean yeah and they're looking at that same parody the nfl has and i guess my last point with this will be the nba has sneakily been that league that has kind of you've had a different winner the last like let's say 10 years you've had like four or five teams who've won a championship good. it's definitely so, good yeah that's awesome and that's good for the league it's good for everybody um, the last thing I was going to mention, the basketball front. Are you concerned with Team USA for basketball? Uh, no, I am not because uh, I always believe in Greg Popovich. And I think, well, was it Bradley Beal had to uh, step out? And I think Kevin yep. Love. And because Jake, of, uh, Kevin Love's out. And Tatum was not playing because of oh, some injury. No, he was, was he a had a little. Yeah, I was a little. I'll be honest with you. I'm more, I think we're all in that camp. I think it's safe to say it's like, yeah, if he doesn't play in the Olympics, it's not the worst thing. It's not. Uh, but yeah, I, I mix Kevin Durant is a beast. He'll do what he's got to do. And uh, everyone else, even Draymond Green is going to be great on it, running the offense. And yeah, I no, I'm not concerned. Even if they lose a game or two, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to falter. I don't think it's going to be like that team with uh, Melo and LeBron. Although that was kind of wacky. It was. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention here was obviously we have football coming up very shortly. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am really tired of hearing about the, all the NFL, the Patriots just pumping up Cam Newton like nothing like last year. Are they? No big. Oh yeah. Oh, weird. oh, they are. But I'm, I'm all, I'm all Mac Jones. I want Mac Jones as the starter. I'm done with Cam. I don't care if Cam goes to another team and exceeds or something like that. I just, I want nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with him. Just because of last year, or just, I no, mean, I've I'm, never been. No. A, it took me. A lot to even give him. All right, I'll watch a shot. Yeah. Him as toxic. I don't want anything to do with Cam Newton. I just. I don't, don't know if he. I don't know if he's toxic. Like as I think his teammates love him actually, but I, I know what you're saying. I think I don't think he can play right now. Yep. That's the thing. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I get, weird. I'm getting tired of just everyone's just hyping up. Well, the Patriots going to be fine. You know, Cam Newton's going to have a bat, bounce back here. Blah 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 blah. No, he's well, not. No, he's not. Even I don't listen. I'm not an advocate you know of having him. I'll be stunned if I'm wrong. I will be absolutely stunned if I'm wrong. I feel just, very confident in saying that if you yeah. are putting the bank or the house on Cam Newton leading this team to a playoff berth after last season, you are out of your flipping mind. He, you know, but he could, and I'm not saying this as a positive necessarily, 
No, no, no. I'm saying gun this in the drops, sense. Gun drops and whatever you call well, it. Well, no, no. It's not gun drops. It's nothing like that. I'm just going by the numbers and how they went about last year. I mean, if their offense is that much better and he doesn't need to do that much, I know. And I'm not an advocate for being a quarterback. But the thing is, if you have, they have kind of a real easy schedule as it looks now. Who knows how the teams will be when they face them? But as of right now, they don't have that uh, crazy of a schedule. Um, they have a revamped team. Their defense is that much better. And if they don't need to score yeah. that much, they got high tower back yeah. the defense and stuff. You get you two tight ends. You also uh, got a Smith bunch of signings. Yeah. I'm excited for that. But yeah, Phil, my biggest thing is no, he's tight end. He can't he's throw. He can't throw the ball. He can't yes. throw the freaking football. He can't. You're he right. Throw. I would rather Tim freaking Tebow as my starting quarterback than that has been. I'm sorry. I would. No, I know. Face. That's terrible. No, Why? it's a prayer after every completion, but. It's um, everyone it huddle up. Let's have a break. The rest of the NFL passed on. There was a reason, and you saw it firsthand last season. Why Bill is so stubborn as a mule right now and giving this guy another chance? Well, what? Is, why do you think he is? Because I think I think he thinks he's a good guy. You know, I think that's what. It do you is. think that's the? Do you think that's it? I Tom, think, what do you? Come on, Tom. What do you got? I think um, I honestly I really don't know why. Bill is sticking with him. It's it, it's blowing my mind that he's giving him another year, especially the way like that. Ever since Bill has been here, we've never the Patriots have never had a. I mean, they have, but they haven't really designed a playbook around a rushing quarterback. Yeah, you know, so it, it's kind of it's just kind of funny that after twenty years of Brady. We decided to stick with this rush, this rushing court, rush first quarterback for two year, for a second year now. In the same right, system. Phil, do you, you do you want if you have the no, choice, I, I want Mac Jones. Choice. I want Mac Jones. Do you, yeah, want to, you want to suffer through whatever all of us had to deal with? I was no. stunned to even continue to play him at the end of the season last year. I mean, he yeah. had nothing to lose, but the problem was Stidham did nothing to prove that he can be an NFL quarterback. That's what the real problem well, was. And it's you not mean, getting talked about enough, in my opinion. Do you think you mean in practice or you like practice in that? and in games? I, well, mean, I don't know. Honestly, he would miss the tuck and duck, miss the interception. Yeah, I like but you the kid, but he didn't yeah. prove us. The well, I don't, I don't know about the kid himself, but I I actually don't think he was given enough of a shot during the season. I think let the throw that because I agree with you at that point. Like with maybe like three or four games left when it kind of was. Well, I don't know if the writing was on the wall. I, I don't think they were officially eliminated until maybe. Actually, they were. It was so weird. It was such a tease. Until, the, until about the midpoint, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even a little, I would say even maybe the first week of December, maybe. Yeah. And they were grasping at straws. But I think they still had a chance. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I'm i with you. I actually, I'll go even further. I think they didn't even give Sidham as much of a chance. Even if they felt like in practice, he couldn't do it. They didn't give him enough of a shot. Then why would you continue with Cam? <laughs> well, I mean, multiple listen. sources confirmed to me that the no. reason Stidham did not get the more of an opportunity is he pissed people off about no. what some certain injury that he showed up to camp with last year, and Bill said, "Screw you, you're out." So that's no. why Hoyer jumped up on that depth chart versus Stidham, who should have been the number two to prove something. Yeah. So to Bill, Bill was ticked because he was ready to give Stidham the opportunity, and Stidham ended up not returning the, the thank yeah. you, basically, and just falling off the depth chart right there. And then when he got put into game action, looked unprepared, wasn't showing anybody that he should be given that chance. So, but is that, but it could have been say, too hard. He could have been too harsh. Well, and I would put you on that, Bill. I would well, not even too did, harsh. He did, he did, he did, he did harsh. He practically did the same thing to Butler in that Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would even say not even too harsh, but just like, oh, you're the coach. Your job yeah. is to get these guys ready. And like, oh, a guy can't be coach. Well, you know, it's your damn job to to get. I mean, it's easier said than done, I guess. But I mean, you couldn't do it with Cam. Cam's not doing it for whatever reason. Cam's not doing it. And you might have a better shot with Sidham because he can throw farther than 10 yards. So, I mean... I, I, mean, I think you guys have heard my stance long. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Long Sorry, I don't mean to. With, with the whole yeah. Belichick versus Brady thing. Bye, Bill. Yeah, I... Bye, Bill. Like, see ya. 
Yeah, I mean, he had something to do with it, but yeah, I Brady's a another. And did you see the report? Another being. Wrap up our football thing right here. Did you see the report about Brady? Did you see the report that came out yesterday? Which he one? He played the entire season basically on a torn MCL. Gee, really? Won. Oh yeah. Wow. Is, is that legit? I think it, I. You know what? I, I I keep saying is it is it the biggest move? Is it the worst move that an organization has ever made in Boston? This stuff. No, I don't think so. I don't know if it is, but it's pretty damn bad. Pretty damn <laughs> I, bad. I'm I'm a fan of what they did. I'll be honest, but I don't like what they I don't like what they did after. I mean, because yeah. you're gonna have to move away from them, you know. Unprepared. I will I will still say to this point, Agreed. the Patriots Agreed. did not think that Brady was actually going to say I'm done. And I'm you're probably right. Yeah. And they panicked and they said, "Oh, what can we get at the right price?" And that's camp. Why they're still believing in it? Maybe it's a pride thing. Maybe it's Bill being stubborn as a mule. And just saying, I'm going to ride it out and I'm going to prove you idiots like myself <laughs> wrong. You're not going to do that, Bill. But okay. I under, I, let's see. I think that that's the stance on how yeah. it is. I think that's what they're trying to preach and have fans buy in. But I'm not one of those suckers. I'm not buying in. Sorry. You picked okay. the wrong guy. I'm done. I'm, I've seen enough. So that's how things look like uh, on the Patriots front. You can agree and disagree. That's how it is. Bill, let's just take Tom as his take. Well, I think we I all have similar state. takes, to be honest. I think we're all pretty much on the same page. We want Mac Jones. <laughs> we um, want a good I quarterback. But the hard facts. And then I tweet yeah. about it on Twitter and make myself look like sometimes an ass. But then, well, and then get put in Twitter jail. Yeah. Right. That'll be good for the past month. Okay. Well, there okay. you go. Well, yeah. it's time for an outburst, I say. Baratek and I in. Uh, Mrs. Vasquez and I, we're on good terms now. So, hey. Boy, what do you do with tech? I tweeted at Christian Vasquez. I said he's been a lazy bum this entire season. Not that wise. I just said it. And then the wife comes at me, goes, oh, well, why don't you go take his spot in the lineup the next day? And I said, I'll be my guest. Get me a Doug Mirabelli police escort, and I'll, we'll be yeah. good. We'll be good. And, well, uh, she went after, she went after Catherine, Stephen Catherine, A. Smith. Catherine was too. not like that and goes, oh. Catherine's wives have to stick together. Girl power or something like that. Dude, you live a weird life. I just have to say, these interactions are just bizarre to me. Is, is anyone doing little, anything? Little, little old me, actually. Little young me over here. Excuse me. Yeah. Little um, young me over here. My Twitter. Well, I've been good for the, I've been on. Good, good, good terms. Good behavior. She went. She tax wife went after uh, Stephen A. Smith though after the whole Shohei Otani. She, she yeah. Wow, they are so bizarre. very lovely lady. She'll probably watch this and come at me again. She, <laughs> she pops out of nowhere. Hey, more views. Oh, she's here now. Oh, great. <laughs> she just I, showed up with with bagels. I do think that Vera, Jason Veritek will make a great manager at some point. So yeah, I think so too. There's that. She's positive. Yeah. So. All right, that should do it here for another episode. Oh, oh go ahead. Well, oh, yeah. I have an, I have kind of a non-sports thing. Um, uh -oh. Space Jam: A New Legacy comes out, came out. Goodbye. Oh, today? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's today, right, Tom? That's yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Count me <laughs> out. Uh, yeah. I mean, is Bill Murray in it again? I imagine he's in there somewhere. I don't, Maybe not. Uh, Lovely, Probably not. lovely gentleman in there that I cannot stand in the NBA. <laughs> the king? The queen. Which, oh, the <laughs> uh, one who plays his wife? She's on uh, Star Trek and... No, he, he's, what the play? Biggest, he's the biggest he's the queen? flopper I've ever seen in my life. Him. Well, he... Uh, yeah, whatever you can do. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to watch it to say I saw it. And well, I'm report gonna, back, Tom. I'm going to hate every you, single minute you, of it. You suffer but. through that. Count me I'm, out. I don't care about the first one if that helps. I don't care. I did wasn't, I think it's both I wasn't the biggest biggest one on that. No, I, I will say no. Yeah, I'm not I never was like a I'm a basketball guy, but I didn't really care. And I love Looney Tunes, but that really wasn't yeah. mainly because they tried to sell kids on wanting to be attracted to female bunnies. But then again, that's a whole nother bag of bones. <laughs> Well, she's back in this one, so she's back. That, that back was, back was, is the key the word there. Of, yes. uh, that was the birth of Tiny Toons Adventures. No, it was that was before oh. that. Tiny Toons was before that. Was it before that? I thought that it was, was much 90. before. I grew up it was, but uh, Space Jam was like ninety four. 
95. 94, was 95 like, or something like that. Yeah. 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 Tiny Toons was like 91, 92. Yeah. He was with the Bulls, wasn't he still? He was with the Bulls. And, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, and the White was, Sox. And the White Sox. Oh. Yeah, I think it was around that time. Yeah, yeah. wasn't it? That's why they, that's part of the reason. Well, that's part. I, I think I'm pretty sure that's why they had like the whole thing about baseball going to the White Sox in the movie was because yeah. it was like right around that time. Right after he got pinched. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. Well, who knows? Should be surprised. So, well, guys, appreciate you being here. Um, we will see you again next time for another lovely episode, as I say that softly, of Face the Facts. Stay cool, stay dry, hopefully. We'll see you next time.